Hello, I'm Chris Venema from Michigan State University Extension Service and our topic today is boiling water bath canning technique. And we are going to talk about equipment. For example, you need to have a kettle that is tall enough so that you have at least one to two inches of water above the jars when you put them in the kettle. So the kettle needs to be large enough so that you have at least one to two inches of water above. You don't have to have a specific hot water bath uh, canner. You could just use a, a large spaghetti pot or a large uh, kettle that you make sauce in. It's just necessary that you have at least one to two inches of water above the jars. Now, the pots, you don't want any them wider than four inches of your largest burner. In other words, you have two inches on this side and two inches on that side. That's the maximum width for a kettle for your largest burner. Ideally, what you would want inside is some type of rack. Now, you can purchase racks separately if you've got a large kettle already. And that rack can be uh, used to put in the bottom because you don't want the uh, jars to set right on the bottom of a hot boiling pan because the bottom of the jar would then become too hot when you took it out of the canner it would explode. Okay, In other words the bottom would just drop right out because it would be too uh, uh, hot for the air that you're putting it to. Now if you don't have a rack that's okay too. You could simply take a towel and fold it up and put it in the bottom of your kettle and then place all your jars on top of the, of the towels. Or you could put together a series of rings that would fit the bottom of your kettle. And that way you don't want the jars, again, resting on the bottom of your kettle. You also need to have um, the disc and ring to go with this particular canning technique. Um, the disc, we're going to preheat in warm water up to 180 degrees to soften that, that uh, sealing compound on it. And then you'll have the ring as, as well. The, I'm going to put these jars in, be, in, this jar in the water because we are going to be demonstrating a technique in a minute. And we want our jars nice and hot. Jars you don't want to use are like your antique jars. For example, this is an antique jar. This is a zinc lid. Zinc lids, they stopped the manufacture of those back in the late 80s. And so any kind of rubber discs around, um, I don't know if you can see this, but this rubber uh, ring is severely deteriorated. This little tab has already fallen off, so that's indicating that it is an antique jar. Um, the rings are not made anymore, and neither are the zinc lids. So therefore, it, it's not going to give you a seal, even if you have some of these zinc lids laying around. Just use them for decoration. You can, you know, use the antique jars and fill them up with dry beans and peas and those kinds of things, and they can be decorative. Another type of jar that you do not want to be using is the type of jar with the baler wire. Okay? This, you would have normally a rubber ring sitting between this glass lid and the rim. And then the baler wire keeps the thing together. Again, purely decorative. Now, Grandma used to use mayonnaise jars and peanut uh, peanut butter jars and jars that they thought you know looked like they were the same size of, as canning rings. These are what we call packer jars. In other words, they have a lifetime. Their job was to go from the factory to the grocery store to your house. That's the life expectancy. They cannot be used to canning because they will not withstand 
the 90 degree drop in temperature that's possible when you're canning. You want a nice pair of tongs when you're taking things in and out of hot water. This is a jar lifter. It lifts the jar in and out of the boiling water. You want a good ladle so that when you're ladling product into the jars, you want a good funnel so that it fits the jar appropriately and you won't be spilling all over the jar. You want your measuring cups. You want your measuring spoons. You want a good timer so that you can keep track of the time. A nice sharp knife. You want a good cutting board. Now the cutting, cutting board not only is good for when you're preparing your produce, but it's excellent for when you want to cool the jars off. Because when you take the jars out of the boiling water bath technique, you will put them on a set of towels or some newspapers so that they can cool down and stay there for a minimum of 12 to 24 hours. The next step that we're going to take a look at is we're going to actually talk about canning of tomatoes. We are canning tomatoes today and to slip the skins off of the tomatoes what we want to do is we want to plunge the clean tomatoes into a boiling water bath and let those skins uh, get cooked for a little bit. In other words, the, they will be hot and they'll be in this hot boiling water for roughly 30 to 60 seconds. And then once the 30 to 60 seconds have taken place and I'm taking note on my clock, I will take them out of the boiling water and I will plunge them to an, into an ice bath. That way the skin will split very nicely off of the tomato and it'll be easier to prepare. And our 30 seconds are up. So we're going to remove them from the boiling water. And plunge it into the ice water. And usually allow it to sit in the ice water for a little bit of time so that the skin has a chance to split. And this tomato has done very nicely for me. You can see how the tomato just peels the skin right off. And then we would core and quarter it and then put it into our container for um, boiling the jar, making it nice and hot. We want to make sure we have our jars all nice and hot when we've got the boiling water going. Let that sit in there for a couple minutes. Bring these back up to temperature so that they're nice and steaming hot. When we're talking about acidified tomato products, we always need to add lemon juice. And we add bottled lemon juice because it has been concentrated to a specific pH level. Whereas if you have a fresh lemon or a lime, it's difficult to really know what that pH level is. And when we're working with the lemon juice, we want to do one tablespoon of lemon juice per pint jar. If we're going to do a quart jar, we want to do two tablespoons of lemon juice. Now, you can use citric acid. With citric acid, you would use one quarter teaspoon per pint jar and one half teaspoon for a quart jar with that particular uh, citric acid product. And you can get citric acid at a pharmacy, at a hardware store, but you want to make sure that it's the food grade citric acid when you're working with it. 
Now I'm going to take my tomatoes that I've had simmering, put them into my jar. I want to shake it down a little bit. Since I don't have quite enough boiling water to cover these tomato products, I'm going to add just a little bit so that I make sure that it's completely covered. You want to leave about a half inch headspace. And the headspace is the distance between the rim of the jar and where the produce actually comes up to in the jar. Now I will add my lemon juice. Remember that's one tablespoon per pint. You can add the lemon juice before you put the tomatoes in or at the same time like I'm doing right now. It's up to you. Now there's a number of people who say, "Ew, that lemon juice is going to taste horrible. Well, before you serve the product you can add some sugar or sweetener to sweeten up the acid taste if you don't uh, like that particular flavor. Now I'm going to take a nice clean cloth, wipe the rim off of my jar because you don't want anything between this little ceiling surface and the ceiling compound on the underside of the disc. And you want to tighten this just what we call fingertip tight. You don't want to crank them all down. You just want it fingertip tight and then we'll put it into the boiling water kettle. And in the event that you don't have enough boiling water to cover the, to cover the jar, you want to make sure that you add boiling hot water as needed and then you would cover it and when the boiling water technique returns to a simmering boil, then you would cover it and set your timer. In this case, we're going to be setting the timer for 40 minutes. And we'll let that process. 